Last time on Dice Funk. Sasha is going to use her conduit of conspiracy. His name is Gabriel, and you bought two grenades from him, and you bought some mines from him. But also off screen, because you had a suspicion you would fight a mech someday, you secretly bought an EMP, which you're using now. You're aware you just used the word propaganda to describe your own uh, media campaign, right? The red wolf stops in the air and kind of looks down at you. Uh, you see Colonel Cassius Pyre, bird person. He's a bird. Yeah, he's a bird. However, one of the wings is a graphene prosthetic. Big O, big delicious over here. Where are your comrades? That negative there, big delicious works alone. Uh, the red wolf kind of just basically cut off your the arm of your mech. Because I don't think it's going to be much of a fight. I, I don't think necessarily a fight, but I think immobilizing it would be a good start. We have your bitch. <laughs> Uh, 13 damage. How does that treat you? I have one health. <laughs> we have your friend. Sorry. That is acceptable. We're going to have to have a family meeting about uh, how we handle enemies and if we murder them. Spoiler alert, probably not. We don't have a mechanic and the lack of having one does seem like huge flaw in our strategy that should be fixed at some point. There is a reason we parted ways. Oh no. Back then is has the situation changed? You saw what happened here. I think it's it's only a matter of time. I hope they didn't notice. Uh what name are you going by now? I wasn't thinking about the big red button. Uh, all I could think about was a certain big blue button that I think is joining us today on the recording. Nut. <laughs> Dice Funk, starring the nut button. <laughs> you should get them to like pay you for that. <laughs> Today's mystery. Will this be the episode where we just nut button? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first po- sponsor of Dice Funk is just a novelty fucking meme in real life. <laughs> I mean, that seems appropriate, right? Are you saying this is a meme show? It could be. We have been known to meme. We have memed We have memed. We might meme again. I do enjoy a good meme. I didn't want to say it, but my new character is Howard the Alien. I don't know what that means. God, how do you not know? You need better memes. I know Howard the Duck. Yeah. No, Howard the Alien. He's very, he's, he's so on, he's so on point. Oh, I just opened my phone and it was that hedgehog in a Ben and Jerry's <laughs> container. <laughs> Zoomed in is what I had open on my phone. All right, I googled Howard the Alien and I hate it and I refuse to look at it any longer. <laughs> let's start the episode. No, no, I need to know what this is. All right, well, you do that on your own time. So let's start, uh, instead of having every downtime uh, episode. Oh, no. Oh, Christ. Every downtime episode uh, force... Uh, Dr. Adler to use her scene to do group therapy. We're just going to have group therapy with everybody involved. Uh, that's just a thing everyone's going to do. So why don't we start there and uh, work through some more feelings about the mission on Hypatia. I'm going to set the scene a little bit because you guys defeated all of your foes and you stopped Invicta's plan. However, there are a few loose ends to tie up, most notably that you captured some prisoners. Oh, uh, yeah. Also the dead bodies. Assume that got some of that got taken uh, care of off screen, but where where I want to start this kind of therapy scene is you all are transporting some of these prisoners uh, to prison where they will stay because they did bad crimes. Um, (laughs) It's not a great way to describe it, Austin. (laughs) They did bad crimes. They did bad crimes. That's legal ease. I'm sorry to get technical, but they did bad crimes and it's illegal to do bad crimes. Um, So what about good crimes? (laughs) Good like cr- smoking that dank weed. Okay, I thought you were going to be like, you know, re- resisting uh, unjust discriminatory laws or something. Oh, that but- too, yeah. Okay. But also that good kush. Yeah. 
All right. You know what kind of show it is. I guess <laughs> if you're here, you're listening, you know. Um, so the Bastards are on a prison transport bus. Uh, Ambassador Jacqueline has asked you guys to, you know, shepherd these prisoners over in this bus. Uh, there's about a dozen prisoners you don't recognize who are being transported for other things unrelated to you. But there are two you're intimately familiar with. Uh, the first is Kaiser. Conduit of Equality. He is a lionfish merfolk. And the second is the clownfish merfolk that you defeated and beat up and he surrendered. And you have found out recently that his name is Christian and he is the Conduit of Strength. Ugh. Get out of here. So you guys are in this bus and it's not a hover bus because hover cars are a bad idea. I've, I've gone on like five minute rants on this before. You don't need the whole thing. It's just a regular bus. And you guys are driving from Apollonius, which is like the earth. Uh, we called it like little earth last time. It's the place where most of the earth people on Gloria hang out. And the bus is driving off into the Terminator uh, where there is a prison. Um, the solitaire don't really use prisons the way we think of them. Uh, traditionally, uh, most of their justice system is around their shells like if you do a minor crime they take some of it or you if they do if you do a major crime they take all of it and you probably die like that's all how a lot of their traditional justice system works it's very material it's about uh if you if you are de- deleterious to the social order you lose the thing that protects your life uh but this prison was constructed for all the various creatures in the, the multiverse and the galaxy many of whom use traditional prisons so you're on your way there. You can look out the one window and see a, the daytime planet. Look out the other window, see the nighttime planet. It's extremely strange. Uh, but in the back of the bus, there's all these prisoners behind the gate. And they all have special handcuffs, which suppress their conduit abilities so they're not dangerous. Uh, but while you're riding, uh, what do you guys talk about? It's a, it's a long ride. Can I talk about how this is becoming more and more like One Piece? Because in One Piece, they also have special handcuffs. That nullifies special powers. <laughs> I've promised myself that if I ever hit the lotto, I will put some time aside to read or watch One Piece, but it has not happened yet. So, coincidence. You don't play the lotto. That's true also. <laughs> I'm, I'm just in, enjoying the mental picture before we go any further of like the first time that um, this species that's all about taking away the, the shells when you have to punish a species and be it like trying to imprison a human and be like, so, you have been convicted of a crime. Just take off some skin. I will take your shirt. I'm taking your shirt. <laughs> your shoes, they're gone. No, you did, a, you did a bad murder. No shoes for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there was a lot of friction in the early days where they're like, all right, how much blood can we take before you die? <laughs> what about the skin? They're just like, wait. Like, we- these hands, these are important, right? Yeah, I bet it was, a, it was a pretty rough go. But eventually they're like, okay, most species in the galaxy put people in boxes for a certain amount of time. We'll do that for you. In jail for borking. <laughs> I think this prison is just called Terminator Prison. Um, the, sol- <laughs> <laughs> the solitaire don't have language, as we've discussed before, so they wouldn't actually have a word for it. They just send each other like concepts through electrical signals. But people who use language have taken to calling it that. So that's how, how you guys can refer to it if you need to do. Guys, let's let's jump off this prison transport <laughs> bus and go get some dinner and talk about our feelings. <laughs> Um, okay, so Sasha's gonna raise her finger, her paw, not her paw, hands. <laughs> I'm not a cat anymore, I'm a bird now. Wing? Uh, maybe we should talk about the way things happened when we came back to the ship and there was a big murder. I ate many brains. No, we froze, froze them for later, shush. I had a nibble. Yeah, okay. I got a little nibble. Shh, you're sp- Here's here's a place to start. Um, just gonna put it this way: doing a murder and eating brains of the people that think that your whole species is about doing a murder and eating the brains not not a great PR move for us. Here's the thing: Objectivist didn't do the murder. He is a literal little baby tadpole. We just decided, and by we I mean me and Courage and Objectivist. That since we already had the dead bodies, we might as well store them for feeding objectivists because apparently chicken nuggets are delicious, but not actually nourishing to illithids. Who knows they were here? Uh, probably more Invicta members. Where are the bodies? We yeeted them into space. What is the problem? 
I <laughs> I want to have a protocol set in place for how we handle things like this in the future. Courage and Are no- the bodies gone? No, I'm not talking about the bodies. I mean, if we kill people or not. We, Courage is a very well trained, very well trained assassin. Um, being well trained at murder probably means very well trained at also holding back on the murder when required. Um, I appreciate the need we had for keeping the the ship secure and not having it uh, disappear under uh, under our uh, lack of watch. Um, I think protocol should be non fatally incapacitate until we get back to make a decision rather than jumping straight to murder. Unless it can't be helped, I'm assuming. Oh, certainly. I I will give a certain degree of... If Courage is the only one on board the ship, and the ship is at risk, and and murder is deemed the only option, I understand that that is a, an option that may have to occur on the table, but I think that primary port of call should always be... Uh, capture. Yeah, capture and incapacitate before before kill. Defense of the ship is not murder. Ha, <laughs> Captain, it's me, Big Star here. Did you not shoot a toucan man in the face? I can't remember, did I shoot a toucan man in the face? Yes, and I this said- This is also a problem. You do not remember the things that you do. <laughs> no, this is me out of character asking, because I recall <laughs> very late at night. <laughs> yes, there, that's when you guys stole the mechs. There was three Invicta, Invicta people in the garage, and I said- Oh, yes. You shot one of them for lethal damage, and I said, so you blow his face off? And you said, yes. Yes, so I think I think if 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 the option is there to non lethal incapacitate, that is always ideal. But I I feel like it is not necessarily a problem so long as you know we are not leaving any evidence that this occurred. Yeah, no, I'm not assigning any blame. I just think it's good for everybody to be on the same page in the future with all these new recruits. I am confused. You frequently initiate combat. But you want non-lethal force. There is such a thing as non-lethal combat. Sometimes combat is necessary. But there is often not a need for combat at all. And yet you initiate. Well, hold on, Drag. No, no. Yeah, it is a fair point you have made. And I, I take it on board. As we came in and faced this Cassius, it was clear we had no chance against his equipment and yet you immediately opened fire i opened you put the entire ship at risk i opened fire with the very clear intention of immobilizing long enough that we could make a non-combat exit it did not work out that way he was not mobile yet at all you had a chance to resolve it peaceably and yet you nearly got sasha killed no that was my smart mouth (laughs) <laughs> you are the captain You are responsible Well hold on there you are, No, no, you are correct I am responsible for what happens with our with our crew I will take responsibility for the fact that Yes, my decisions did put some of our crew at risk And next mission we do Things will be going very differently on my part Also this is group therapy, not group yell at the captain <laughs> Big Star says, sometimes it's important to get these things out, lest they fester and undermine group morale. Once we're all on the same page, things should be much smoother. In fact, pre- on previous ships in which I have served, uh, groups have not been quite so spread out in their duties. Uh, as this crew grows, perhaps we could specialize more. For instance, all of the command Responsibility currently rests on Captain Melbeck, but on many ships, with a sizable enough crew to fill the role, there will be an appointed first mate, or a number one, if you will, who can make command decisions when they have the necessary intel, intelligence, strategy. Strategy? Hmm. (laughs) That sounds like something I like. I'm certainly open to the idea of a first mate. Is the decision I do not feel should be made until we have completed one additional mission I think it's important that we see how certain changes are going to mesh with the group I will be watching for this as we go forward Dr. Adler you haven't said anything 
Uh, I've been I've been sitting back, kind of listening, taking notes. My notes this time have much less butts uh, than <laughs> on them. Uh-huh. Of that being the only note to take, so it's it's a lot more uh, diligent this time. Uh, and everything I was about to say has just sort of been uh, said by a big star. So I'm gonna pretend that I said it. <laughs> <laughs> we are of one mind, Doctor. <laughs> High five. It's almost as if we sprang from a single creator, you and I. <laughs> almost. <laughs> All right. So uh, this therapy session has arrived to a couple conclusions. One, Captain Melbeck is going to be experimenting with her, her command style in the next session. Uh, two, we may be on the lookout for someone to be promoted to first mate or Star Trek's number one. So, yeah, I think mostly I just want to hear someone and say engage and someone else say make it so. That's kind of what I'm angling for. <laughs> Um, what was the other one? Oh, non-lethal if possible. Anything else? Sasha needs to shut her smart mouth sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's something Lauren is taking to heart. <laughs> All right. If there's nothing else, then uh, you guys pull up to Terminator prison and uh, start, uh, you know, leading the prisoners off the bus and into the prison. Does anybody want to talk to any of these guys? We didn't talk at all to the clownfish guy, I believe, right? He basically just said, like, oh, Cash, this is going to kill you. Y'all are dead as fuck. He and just then like, I intimidated him, right? Yes. Yeah, I want to I wanna fuck with him. Uh, <laughs> I have to ask an important question before we go much further into this downtime episode. Um, mm-hmm. Can Captain Melba walk yet? Has she at least slept enough to be able to be able to walk again? <laughs> Yes, there was a there was a suitable amount of uh, rest before this, so you're completely free and clear. Last time it was funnier for it to not have been that way, but now it's fine. Okay, so this time I get to actually be back. At, yep, at you're all good. Usable for the downtime. Thank you. <laughs> Although I think you probably still have a mean case of tini- tinnitus because you shot a r- shotgun repeatedly while in a small enclosed mm. cockpit. This isn't a mechanical thing, but just every once in a while, just have in mind that you hear a <laughs> for a little while. Yeah. So, uh, hey, clown, clown guy, <laughs> you big old clown. What's your story? Look at the way you're dressed. You're the clown. Look who's in handcuffs. You're the clown. You know what? You got me there. Fair enough. You know what? Real recognize real. I am in handcuffs. You got me. All right, cool. So what's your deal? My deal? I'm Christian. I served so that you weren't enslaved by illithids. You're welcome. And uh, Cassius is still going to kill the shit out of you. We'll see. I'm not scared of him. It's usually the last mistake people make. Um, But, like, I get it. I get uh, I get fighting. I, I appreciate your service. Don't think I hate veterans. Uh, my dad will have served in the wars. I have decided that right now in character. Mm-hmm. All right. Important. Important. Also an owl. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Not not a given in this universe. No, I know, but he's an owl. I'm gonna say he's one of those real big ones. Ah, uh, yes, the big owl. It's the great owl, I think. The one from the lollipop commercials. Yeah, the really big guys with the little horn, great horned owl, yeah. Okay. Ooh, or what about the owl from uh, Ocarina of Time? The one with the name that's really long and no one likes it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll get back to what kind of... Okay, listen, we're not deciding my father's species right now. He's an owl, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> he served in the wars. Okay. But, you know, that doesn't mean you have to work for this shitty organization that only sees you as pawn in a propaganda game. I don't know about that. I... There are bad people. There are bad people, and I shoot them. It's pretty sweet. And how were we the bad people? Because we weren't gonna let you steal a bunch of animals from a nature preserve. Call because you're all about sort of collaborators. You just let neolithids do whatever you want. You're making the entire galaxy less safe. Your softness is gonna get us all killed. Fuck you. No, fuck you. Oh, I hadn't thought of it that way. Damn. Yeah, you sure hadn't. Listen. Hey, everybody, listen to this. She's blowing my mind over here. Oh my god, I'm gonna kill him. Oh. <laughs> Listen, you think it's better? You think so? You think you can kill all the illithids? First of all, that's dumb. You're wrong. <laughs> two, <laughs> two, wouldn't it be better if they didn't have to eat our brains? If they had a safe, renewable food source that wasn't killing a bunch of people, 
and then they wouldn't want to hopefully wouldn't want to eat our brains and then everybody can be at peace in the universe the whole universe can be at peace doesn't that sound great christian you why are you always trying to indoctrinate everyone to your way of thinking why can't you just consider other people outside your echo chamber that's what literally what you're doing i'm gonna shake him that's literally (laughs) what you're doing i think you should listen to real earthlings the heartland you know what if somebody someday was like all fish people are murderers you wouldn't want to try and convince them i don't know oh man do i have some history for you about merfolk and you guys throwing poison into the ocean who are the birds everyone but us okay and you didn't like it did you no it was bad yeah, so imagine that, but different with somebody else. Yeah, I feel like you've extremely lost the plot. I'm going to go to prison now. Ha- enjoy your getting killed. Enjoy your not getting killed in three square meals a day. And free health care. And free health care. It sounds better than my real life. What? Yeah, yeah it sucks out there. Bye. <laughs> nice talk, Christian. <laughs> Peace. He crotch chops at you with his handcuffs. I'm going to dab at him. (laughs) You can't dab on the haters, Sasha. (laughs) I'm dabbing on the haters. All right. Kaiser, anybody? (laughs) I'm trying to think what we follow that with. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm so good. I guess I will. uh, If Kaiser's going away forever to never be heard from again, uh, I will ask him. So how long... uh, have you been a part of Invicta? I mean, since I was old enough to join up, I guess my whole adult life. So. So I don't know if I need to do a knowledge check on this. How uh, how much would or how long is he expected to be in prison for what I guess attempted poaching and conspiracy to commit murder? I don't know exactly what he'd be found guilty of, but. Yeah, I mean, probably like, yeah, three three counts of attempted poaching, uh, destruction of property because all the mechs, uh, Trespassing. attempted murder for everybody on uh, the bastards, and then the actual successful murder of the park ranger. So yeah, he's probably never getting out. Okay. Well, that's a shame. I was going to try to help him uh, if he ever got out, but... And I was going to make a joke about how by then maybe the stink will have come off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He got he got like triple stinked. He got armpit action yeah. and then the hamster. He just got bru- you guys fucked him up. Yep. I'm gonna give him my book uh, that is uh, all the information on Taras, which was clearly wrong that I had before, <laughs> and give him some reading material. He says, "Man, if I wanted to read, I could have just stayed back on Earth. That's the whole point of all of this." There are a couple pictures in there. How ironic that, you know, he wanted to get away from the life of no advancement, no adventure, only to be caught up in a pen where none of those things will ever happen and all his needs will be provided for. On Earth or in prison, I'm just another citizen with a number and I get my stipend and I get my check or whatever and I get the food and the insurance. Out there, man, I was an elite sniper. People respected me. I had brothers in arms, sisters in arms. I was a hero. All over now. (laughs) Well. If that's the way you choose to look at your life, Kaiser, then it's never going to change. At least I had that. (laughs) You guys are on, you guys are in your own prisons no matter where you go, so. Well, I hate to tell you, but your memories are constantly being replaced over time, and the actual knowledge of what happened has already been replaced in your mind. You're just creating stories that you'll then remember and continue to deteriorate over and over. So, you don't even have those. Damn! (laughs) Wow! So you're a neurologist. All right, there's a wrinkle. (laughs) Not really. I mean, that's kind of basic knowledge, nerd. All right, so you just send him on his way? Yeah, I mean, I tried to get- I tried to give him some peace there, and I don't know. Get wrecked, nerd. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so, sometimes people are just fascists and they don't get character development. Fuck them. Yeah. All right. So first downtime scene. Uh, all of you have leveled up and you're all going to do some stuff before the next mission. What is that kind of stuff? So uh, Olivia took another level in Cleric. Uh, so she's level five. The... Main thing, everyone gets now at level 5 the proficiency bonus increase, which means, like, their spells are better, their skill checks are better, that sort of stuff. Uh, As for clerics themselves level 5, 
They get access to two level 30 spell slots, which is pretty spicy. But then outside of that, I get Destroy Undead, which I don't know if that's ever going to come up in this campaign. Because I don't know how many undeads we're fighting and when in those situations I'd want to just completely eradicate them from existence, which is what Destroy Undead does. But I do have it. Yeah. So that's my level up. All right. And for my uh, downtime, I want to get with Objectivist because our our main mission, well, one of the missions we had when we went to uh, Animal Planet was... <laughs> I should have known it was going to be called that. <laughs> Well, I just don't remember names, all right? They're very space names. So one mission we had was to find an animal who could potentially be a good influence or uh, one of the good potential like, key components to creating this food for the uh, for the Illithids. So uh, with an animal full of so much life, we're going to go through records I think that Big Star provided to try to find if we can find something that might be good. All right, so Doctor, you're going to use your big Doctor brain and Objectivist, who was, you know, in the leadership capacity in the original uh, Illithid food experiments to try to advance that, which is good. Somebody should be working on that. Do you want to go with Objectivist to the facility where they're working on it? Is that where you want to set this? Yeah, sure. That seems good. It was. Can there be a craft brewery next door as well? Of course. Like, like connected to it? <laughs> <laughs> There's just a, a secret passageway from one to the other. No, it's like that, that open slideway. So like on the other side, it's like, hey, you know, if you're working here at this lab, you can come over for a craft beer. All right. I assume any lab Dr. Adler works in immediately becomes some sort of t- uh, chai latte sort of lab as well. Well, no, this time it's a, this time it's beer. So like a dive get... bar or is it like a fancy hipster bar? Oh, it's, it's, either, a hip, it's one it's or the a other. Hip, it's a hipster bar. Well, sometimes they go to dive bars. Like, uh, it smells like oak inside, oh, and they let no. you. And like the tables are old board game like play oh, mats no. that have been made into like lacquered <laughs> and made into tables. This sounds familiar. <laughs> you got called out, huh, hipster? I'm not a hipster. <laughs> Basically, you're kind of like a goth hipster. I'm not no. Oh yeah, they play Welcome to the Rack Blade a lot. <laughs> Yeah. The what? Could you do me a favor and just fuck all the way off? <laughs> uh, does Dr. Adler wear the uh, objectivist necklace? Does that how you transport him? I mean, is there one that's more dignified for him? There can be. Or is he completely or is he completely like is he like, oh I love being in an alarm clock all day? I think he loves it. I guess I'll carry him in that, but not around my neck, because that is a very gauche medallion. Around your arm, like a bag, like a purse. Is there a way to put a mesh back to it so I can put a bunch of pins on the other side? That way it's <laughs> kind of hipstery. All right, so you're going to decorate it for your yeah. uh, your day out with the boy. Mm-hmm. I packed him some frozen brains and the good goo. All right. Uh, so you take Objectivist to the food lab, and you guys are going to go over some of the different species that could be hybridized with leeches uh, to create the uh, ideal food for the illithids. Um, because, as you said, they feed off both brain tissue and the, the psychic energy of intelligent beings. Um, of course, leeches aren't very smart, but they have brains throughout their entire body, which just ups the percentage of a organism that can be brain. Uh, so now you have to find something to kind of hybridize with it. The problem is you make something too smart and it becomes cruel to eat it. And if you make something not smart enough, it's not nourishing. So it's a very fine line you have to do here. And I think Objectivist like starts right away with the uh, the questions about the ethics of this. I didn't know we were going to get here, but here we are. He says, so you do not eat flesh? No, I uh, I am vegetarian. I'm actually, uh, no, I think I made this joke before already that she doesn't eat anything that's seen sunlight. Does this not cause you great hunger pain? No, I mean, there was a long time ago in which an entirely plant-based diet was possible, but still not perfect. But, I mean, we've got perfect Earth now, so, I mean, we've solved that problem. So, you were trying to give us the technology to get to your lifestyle. I'm presenting the opportunity to do so. But not all Earthlings abstain from flesh. Do you consider them monsters like you consider us? No, although there are some that do. It just depends on the extreme of which you viewpoint it. I mean, there are a lot of things I've had to make peace with as a doctor or else I wouldn't be able to get anything done. Like, people die every day, but if I let every death bother me, then 
you just sit there and panic and never nothing ever gets done. Those Invicta terrorist people, they think I am a monster because we eat people's brains, but the earthlings, they eat uh these cows and these chaikins. Why what is the difference? What so illithids don't have any form of cattle, I guess then? Uh, so canonically, they have a like a deformed humanoid. It's really kind of a gross thing. I didn't want to bring up. But they they actually do have like human cattle. It's just extraordinarily dark. Okay, uh, so it generally seems to depend on the sentience of the creature, or I guess sapiens rather, uh, a creature that can think and feel and talk and create art is generally considered more frowned upon to eat than one who's entire life will consist of grazing but if the cows got smart and made art and had weapons would you let them kill the humans or would you destroy them like you destroy the invicta i mean this is a large hypothetical with a lot of angles to consider we would if they spontaneously gained super intelligence and wanted to strike back uh we would have to reach some sort of peace deal with them ideally uh, it takes preventative steps going forward to no longer eat beef. Would you fight on the side of the Chahickens against the humans? I wouldn't fight in general. I'm a doctor. I, lo- I loathe combat of all forms. Then can I have your gun? What would you do with the gun? I want to decorate it with many rhinestones. Yeah, sure, go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, now Objectivist has a gun. That's my boy. Oh, 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 he has a gun. What's he gonna trigger it with? I don't know. I think I think his the goo tail. The goo will probably destroy it. I just like the image of him floating in his goo tank with a gun and rhinestones. Yeah, he's a very God. Fancy. I love my beautiful drag queen son. <laughs> um, all right, so you guys start looking over the paperwork, trying to find suitable candidates. Uh, Objectivist points a couple out to you. He says. There is the Grell. They are brains with tentacles and beaks. Very angry. Have you seen them? Uh, I believe I've heard of them before, yes. The giant brains with beaks and like tentacle stalking leg things. Yes, like your earth jellyfish, but with a brain instead of a sack. Uh, also, I try not to say sack, huh? I don't like the way that sounded in my mouth. <laughs> sack. <laughs> Also, you have to Google Grell D&D, because if you just Google Grell, you'll get an anime character. Yeah, I found that out very quickly. Oh, is that the one with the big teeth? The, like, shark teeth going on, and the red, yeah. Oh, what's that from? Uh, Black Butler, I think. Oh, I love that show. I think they're from Black (laughs) Butler. I love him, yeah. (laughs) I like garbage, let me live. No, I love that you were like, who's this character? I've never seen I love that show! (laughs) I just saw him. I remembered it was him. He's that. It's, yeah, I love Grill. All I know about Black Butler is it's incredibly homoerotic, which is exactly oh, why yeah. I knew Lauren loved it. <laughs> Shut up. Do you deny anything I said? <laughs> no. You can't call me out like this. I'm sorry. Uh, so what, do you, what does Dr. Adler think about the medical potential of using Grill? It definitely seems viable, but... I mean, the advantage of a leech is that they create multiple brains within one body as opposed to a growl, which is just a brain that's a body. Mm -hmm. So where would the multiple brains really come in? Also, I believe growl looks like they have their own language. So I'm assuming they're actually like capable of like complicated speech, like they're sapient creatures. Yes, perhaps too smart for our needs. Good thought, doctor. Uh, Next up, uh, Objective says... Do you know about the Yeetsan? <laughs> the what? Yeetsan. Y I T S A N. I'll put a picture of one in the chat. Are you sure it's how it's spelled? It's Yitsan, but I don't think that Objectivist can make that noise with his mind. Hold on. Can Yeet- we just call them the Yeet and then we throw something every time we reference them? Yes. Okay. The Yitsan. I put one in the roll 20s. Does anybody want to describe what you're saying? <laughs> he's a spiky boy. He's like he's look, looks like a xenomorph, kind of, but uh, with a less. He's so head. angry. Are you saying that in the Spelljammer book, there's a picture of a xenomorph, and they gave it a different name and tried to say it's their own creature? I mean, yeah. What an underbite. Uh, that's exactly what they did. You could tell I screen capped it from the Spelljammer book because there's like the stat block in our image. But uh, the Yitzan, Y I T S A N, is just a, it's just a xenomorph. 
but with a really big underbite. Yeah, you got a, some big chompers. Yeah. And a more scorpiony like tail. Yeah, but it is 100% literally just D&D's xenomorph. Uh, what do you think about that? Less intelligent than a growl, probably. Uh, does he have... This is one that I'm saying Olivia uh, has not heard of before, mm. and uh, which means she needs to get on that. Uh, so what lifestyle do these things live? Like, what do they do? I mean, they're they're bipedal and... They're almost human-like in every single way, so you know my mind immediately assumes that these things have their own culture and things like that. Have you ever seen the films Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, Alien Covenant, Alien vs. Predator? That one I've seen. <laughs> that was a very dark answer to that question. Uh, they're basically just parasites. Um, okay. They're not. They're they're killing machines to known to have no advanced culture. Uh, they are. I think like the closest in our human world would just be like an apex predator, like a panther or a bear or something. Something that it just kills the shit out of everything. It seems as though there's potential there, but it is likely too dangerous to be the source that we we need for this. If all it does is murder, it seems like a very dangerous thing to then give that super intelligence potentially you think the sapience is low enough to be acceptable i mean it's a creature that doesn't seem to have any real thought process except to murder and then i guess eat i don't know if it eats everything it kills or if it kills for fun like a cat (laughs) but perhaps if we could breed them to be more docile then they would be suitable it's perhaps a very slippery slope to get onto if we're choosing to deliberately breed sort of like dumber creatures you know to make them to that point that seems like a a road we don't want to go down right now objective says i have one more animal for your consideration before we call it a day uh have you heard of the maxwell no uh, now, this is a creature, if you read the document that I posted on the Patreon or for the players, I put it in our Skype chat that uh, explains all the different planets in, this, in the Markov system. Um, you will know that on Pell 3, the, there are three moons of Pell. Pell is a gas giant. It is not habitable. But the three moons uh, are all abandoned and uninhabitable as well, except for Pell 3. We've been to Pell 3. We know it's habitable. Well, the reason it supports a complex carbon life is that there are the the corpses of a bunch of animals scattered across it, which have strange properties. No living one has ever been found, but these things, which are called Maxwell's after Maxwell's demon, which is a physics thing that I won't bore you with. um, They seem to generate immense and disproportionate amounts of energy. Extrapolate on that. If they exude uh, energy, if they had a lot of mental capacities, they could exude an extreme amount of psychic energy, which, I mean, even theoretically, do, do, do illithids need to always eat the whole brain, or can they sometimes just feast on strong psychic energy itself? We can live on psychic energy for quite a long time. Eventually, we will need flesh as well, but... Uh, an illithid could live in a populated area and just live off the ambient psychic energy for some time. This actually happened in season three, where there was an illithid character who lived in a small town, and he did eventually eat a brain, but he lived there for a while without doing that. So, long-time listeners know it's possible. So, in that scenario, we could create these and not necessarily need to harvest them in mass production and things like that they could on their own if a single body of one of these things could produce what 20 brain 20 people's worth of psychic energy at once i mean they could almost be like a like an energy dam yes unfortunately we have been unable to find a living specimen but perhaps we will be able to find more information if we examine some of the maxwells on pell 3 agreed now, do you like an autumnal ale, or would you prefer a stout? Which one has the most flesh flavors? Stout. Then I will have a stout. No, he's a baby! 
pour it into the goop. I don't know. <laughs> I will drink it out of my new gun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so we'll put a we'll put a pin in that. I think the food uh, thing is moving along nicely. We've, we've ruled out some species, but we have some work to do on Pell Three. Uh, what person wants to go next with their downtime? I would like to go next with my downtime, but I have a a very small scene I'd like to insert before I do the the sort of planned downtime thing. Um, uh huh. So I'll I'll start with my um my update for this week. Um. So, for level 5, Captain Liamoira gets the proficiency bonus that everyone gets at level 5. Um, I now get to attack a second time when I attack, which is cool. Um, I now have four spells total, um, four level 1 spell slots and two second level spell slots, uh, five extra max HP, and I learnt the second level healing... Uh, the second level spell, Healing Spirit. So... Uh, I have I have some some healing power and I get to to do more shooting of me gun. Um, so before we do my sort of downtime scene, I do just want to have a very quick scene where at some point when there is a quiet moment, um, Captain uh, Captain Liamoira wants to just take Drag aside um, and have have a minute with him. Um, I'm just going to be direct with you. I'm aware you think very little of me of a captain, and I'm very understanding of why. My management style is reckless, but I see things that are going to happen and are going to go very, very wrong, and I stop them. I've brought this team back from death more times than I can count. We've, we've been outpowered. We've, we've lost many encounters. We've, we've objectively had moments where we shouldn't have won things, and I've made us get out of situations okay. I. I'm the reason you have a brain right now, and the the problem with my power is it causes me to get inebriated. It's it's a requirement of me undoing that which is set in stone, and it can lead to bad choices on my part. Like, you are entirely right that me starting a fight with that mech was entirely unnecessary, and was a result of me being absolutely bleeding drunk, but... You seem to treat me getting drunk as if it's something that I'm doing for no good reason. I'm doing it because I am watching countless times my crew get get maimed or hurt or killed or fail to it to to land a hit when it's important. I'm constantly watching us fail and trying to rewrite things that seem seem done that seem set in stone. <sighs> you think this is related to your ability? But it's not. This has been problem even when you're sober. Back on Pell 3, the very first thing you did when you failed to frighten them is draw your weapon. You endanger us. Whether you're thinking about it or not. You, enti- you are entirely right when you say that our crew lacks discipline. You lack discipline. Whether you like it or not, I am your captain, and you show me so little- Then start ordering! You want to see what kind of captain I'm going to become? Things are going to change. I- the reason I wanted to talk to you- one- one thing I think about you is you are criminally overlooked in how- in how well you actually manage at- at- at being on top of things. I want you as a second in command because there are times when I need a second in command. There are times when my judgment is in bed and I need someone to step in and say, And your judgment is poor now. (sighs) Adler is your first mate. I came to talk to you because it is incredibly depressing to see your crew fail again and again and to try and stop it. And I honestly think that you have incredibly sound judgment, but... (sighs) You show incredibly little respect, and your place on this crew is incredibly in danger if you do not step in line and stop questioning my actions and to give me a chance to... (sighs) No, you know what? I don't know. I don't know why I... This next mission we do, I am going to be acting very differently, but I expect to see you step in line. And if you do not step in line by the time that we next talk with each other after the next mission is done, your place on this crew is... Certainly, certainly not stable. Likewise, your position as my captain and my employer 
is much the same. I think some of the people in our audience who had money bet on whether or not there'd be inter-party conflict are very upset right now. (laughs) I'm not involved! I did it! (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, the odds were bad, and you took a long shot, and you lost. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I did a thing. All right, Captain Melbeck, do you you want to do do anything else this week? Uh, Yeah, so I have a... I have a thing this week, which is I want to deal with delivering this uh, this parcel. Another of uh, Leah Moira's brilliant decision making. <laughs> yeah, she's such a good character. <laughs> um, so Leah Moira Melbeck, you go off. Um, on it doesn't have to be with the rest of the crew. Maybe you take another ship, or maybe you just take the Snallygaster out while other people are doing stuff. It doesn't have to be a big thing. You head on over to Pell Three. I'll remind the audience. Pell is the furthest planet from the Markov sun. It is a huge gas giant, like bigger than Jupiter. It's crushingly, impenetrably huge. Uh, And around it, there are three moons. The only one that anyone's on is Pell 3, and that is because of these Maxwells, which I didn't actually describe. They're basically like mountain-sized slugs is what they look like. Um, But they're all dead. They're all petrified corpses, and no one knows what they were what they did they're just there and people figured out that they're basically limitless sources of energy which people have used to terraform uh not not completely but enough of pell 3 to live on and in fact all of the cities on pell 3 are built around these maxwells uh so the city you're going to go to is called drake city um and it is uh where the caravella crime family the smugglers in the system uh, are known to rule and there's very little you need to do to seek them out. You basically land your ship, you walk to like the nearest bar, and just like someone taps you on the back. Like you're just like spotted immediately. They saw you coming from a mile away. Um, Lamor is gonna quietly turn around and uh, see who it is. Uh, it is a tall, about six foot tall, uh, creature, an alien creature who at first you think is clad in all black armor, but then you realize it is a carapace, a chitinous kind of natural protection that this humanoid alien has. Uh, it does not have any, like, eyes or mouth, uh, and it is uh, kind of off-putting how impersonal it feels. It's almost like a construct, but it is not. It's an alien called a Zodar. Z-O-D-A-R. Uh, hello. Can I uh, help you? Uh, it holds out an elbow, as if to link arms with you and escort you. Uh, I take the arm and and walk with them. All right. Uh, the Zodar leads you through Drake City. Uh, you kind of got off the, the ship at a, kind of the port, and you went to like a nearby, like, I don't know, I assume bar, both because of who Melbeck is and both because that's how you gather information in a RPG. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it, the Zodar leads you away from that kind of district up into the nice part of Drake City and then up to like the, the Lord's Manor, <laughs> like the nicest... Uh, house it's basically an estate here in drake city and it leads you up to this uh house without a word it just silently it doesn't have a weapon it doesn't have any like equipment it just leads you uh all the way up to this house and kind of gets you up to the door and opens it for you unless you say or you want to do anything on the way no um i i will do um an insight check probably just to be like is is does this all feel like this is how this is supposed to be playing playing out based on what i know all right. Okay, that's a six. Not great insight. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. I want to say that this thing, which has an incredibly strong grip on your arm, it, this thing feels powerful. And you start to feel very intimidated. Like, oh no, it's leading me to my execution. <laughs> as it leads you uh, up to the door, opens it, and then just kind of waves you inside stoically. Mm. So you're actually pretty intimidated is how you feel with a six. Yeah, no, the captain is staying rather quiet for fear of just like, for messing anything up. This is, unless someone starts the conversation, she's just going to quietly go along with this. All right, so you walk in, and you're feeling intimidated and small, and so you kind of stay in the uh, entranceway for a moment. Uh, Eventually, the Zodar sees that you're not moving, uh, closes the door behind it as it enters, and kind of just pushes you forward uh, into a kind of sitting room where there is a human man in a, like, luxurious, soft purple robe, with a smoking pipe sitting in front of his as fu- his hearth hearth how do you say that hearth 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 uh, and he's just sitting there and he says hello it must be one of the new smugglers 
Um, yes, not sure how permanent this is going to be, but uh, here I am today. <laughs> uh, the human man stands up and offers a hand out to you, and he says, uh, Finny Caravella, how are you? Uh, Liam Moira Melbeck. I'm here. I'm all right. <laughs> Did my Zodar give you any trouble? They are in a, an imposing presence. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, always always a treat to uh, walk through town with a, ha- with a handsome someone on your arm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're very useful. Uh, my father, he kept quite a menagerie of exotic helpers. We got rid of most of them after he passed, but uh, you can't find help like the Zodar and Markov. They, you know, <laughs> under that armor... They're 99% muscle all the way through. It's a biological marvel. No one even knows how they think or eat. Yeah, it's wild. Oh, certainly is. And if you're someone like me that enjoys uh, a, so, someone, someone strong on your arm, it's, uh, it's, it's quite the treat. They say they can only talk three times in their entire lives. No one knows why or how they don't learn language or anything but they know whatever they have to say it's one of life's biggest miracles oh indeed but it's a, a long been long been a personal goal to uh have an encounter with one that goes so well that they use one of their three words if only we could be so lucky <laughs> uh, uh the zodar just kind of nods and excuses himself from this room walks away <laughs> I, I I do always wonder whether a pleasant moan counts as one of the three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't. You don't get many uh, hints as to what's going on under there, but every once in a while you get you get a glimpse, and they seem mostly genial. I've never heard one complain. So <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Was, uh, Melbeck. Yeah, uh, Melbeck. Yes. I hope you don't mind me asking if it's too impertinent. Is it true what they say about the GIF homeworld? I don't know what to say about the Gif homeworld. That you don't even know where it is anymore. That you've spent so many years gallivanting around the galaxy, exploring, fighting, conquering, loving, that it's just knowledge of your homeworld has been lost? I I can't speak for any Gif beside myself, but I know that uh, if I ever had a home, it's long since gone to me. Uh, Mine has been a life of... uh, Constant travels, very little settling. I find aliens so fascinating. Earthlings, dreadfully boring. I I find those aliens on Earth rather fascinating myself. Oh, you've been to Earth? I've been there once or twice. Uh, nice. You know, every, every, everyone who's not you is always interesting. Different, different <laughs> is fascinating. Um, that we can agree. So I hear you have a package for me. I do indeed. I slide it over. All right. He takes it from you. Uh, He kind of carefully checks the corners to make sure it wasn't opened. This is the part where if you had looked inside, you would have been in a lot of trouble. (laughs) Uh, You did not. Uh, And after he is confident that you did not look inside, he throws the package into the fire. Oh, I see what kind of situation this is, huh? (laughs) Uh... You don't hire a new employee without an interview. Oh, indeed. The question is whether I'm a new employee or not. (laughs) We pay well. Better than anyone else. My question is not whether you pay well. My question is how you protect those who are working for you, and should I ever wish to walk away? Well, (laughs) is that an option on the table? That's always more my, uh, my interest. Well, we protect our own through numbers, force resources. I mean, when you hear about smugglers, you're talking about the Caravellas. There are no other options because why would you deal with anyone else when you could deal with the best? And as far as far as leaving, uh, we're confident that you won't want to. Why do anything else but get paid the best rates for the best work and to work for the best organization? It's It speaks for itself. It's illogical to want to leave, but we realize it happens from time to time. It's sad. Uh, Poor decision-making always makes me sad personally, but um, (laughs) as long as you're loyal and we don't have to deal with you, people grow apart. I suppose suppose my question is more, if I'm caught carrying something that I shouldn't be, is this a I'm thrown to the wolves situation or is this a, well, you you were doing good work for us, we will make sure that 
you you haven't been caught with something isn't a problem for you. <laughs> it's funny you phrase it like that. Uh, if, to use your metaphor, you will be thrown to the softest, kindest wolves. Your jail cell will be fully decked out in the latest fashions. You will receive meals far more luxurious than any of your fellow prisoners. Your family will be taken care of. But if you are caught, you are fully liable, and you have never met me before. <laughs> uh, well, but you seem like you have your head on straight. You seem like someone that knows what they're doing. And I think that there's every chance you'll be hearing from me down the line. This is not me shutting down this line of communication by any means. Well, I'm glad to hear it. If you ever need work, uh, you all you have to do is look, and it will find you. <laughs> we uh, pride ourselves on be, being able to anticipate the needs of our customers. <laughs> Metadata. Oh, wonderful things, isn't it? I uh, I heard back on Earth they had uh, there was there was once this fantastic ability to uh, predict what people were going to do some 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 sort of fan- it's a, some sort of really good computer they had or something. <laughs> not not a big fan of all of Earth's uh, nonsense. Got a man inside the internet seems a bit silly. <laughs> it's always useful if you <laughs> are having trouble finding something. It's useful to have someone who's uh, been rooting around in there long enough. Well, hopefully your curiosity will be an asset. Uh, it was wonderful meeting you, and I uh, hope we can work together in the future. Indeed. I trust you can show yourself out? Oh, that I can do. All right. The Zodar's busy making dinner. He loves it. <laughs> Not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Uh, so I guess, Captain Melbeck, you leave the Caravella estate. <laughs> Uh, yep, she's going to head back and uh, prepare for whatever the next mission is. Um, I want to say, though, on your way back, so you walk back through the nice part of Drake City, you walk through the slums on the way to the uh, port where your ship is docked, and as you take a shortcut through an alley, uh, you feel something which you recognize as the familiar feeling of a gun's barrel being pressed against your back. Oh, shit. Behind your heart. And a voice says... Don't move. I am the conduit of death. Answer my question and walk away. Lie or move and you die. There are far easier ways than this to ask a girl out on a date, you know. (laughs) The voice says, you just delivered a package. Who is your source? Give him up and walk away. Protect him and die. I'm going to be 100% honest with you, and I promise you, this is this is the honest to God's truth. It's been a busy time since since I met them. I don't honestly remember their name right now, and that is no lie. I could not tell you their name if you had a gun pointed to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> the voice says, "You really don't remember my name." <laughs> Ah, beautiful. Hello. (laughs) That was like a week ago, Captain. Oh, goodness. If you'd had the week I'd had, I have fucking blacked out. Um, Also, hey, it's good to... Here's what I'll say. It benefits me not to be able to sell anyone out in this line of work. (laughs) Yes, it is great that you did not. I wasn't sure if I could trust you. It was another test. (laughs) How have you been? You're doing all right. Yeah, you turn around and you see that the person with the gun on your back is Ragnar, the drow. Mm. Uh, once again, this person has the mohawk. They have the, the rest of their head is shaved. They have an, an amazing scar on the back of their head. They're dressed. Uh, before they had a leather jacket, they probably have like almost like a full hair metal ensemble. Like they're, It's a very garish kind of dress this person indulges in. They They like to look just bananas at all times um and this is ragnar you know that in character were you lying to protect him or did you just not remember um so me as a player was being very honest that i was having a mental blank and could not remember their name but the way i want to play the way i think it's interesting to play this is maybe legitimately melbeck couldn't remember the name and now is gonna try and i suppose it'd be performance um Try and bluff that this was all just a... No, 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 I knew what was going on. I was just, you know, I, I'm I'm that good. Yeah, that's deception to, to do that. 
Come on, good roll. Um, ten. I'm going to re. Okay, okay. Question for you, Austin. Are we? Are we? <laughs> are we resetting the the? Actually, no. It doesn't map. This question doesn't actually matter. Uh, I was going to ask whether the drink counter was going to get reset, but after after this encounter, it's not going to matter for a while. Um, mm, foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Um, I'm going to do a re-roll. Uh, that's a five. Let's re-roll one more time. Lol. I know, I'm using it for something entirely unimportant, but... Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, a five again. <laughs> Two! <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> okay, I'm now going to ask this, Austin. Can we please reset this before the next mission starts? Is that a thing we can yes. do? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to do this now because this is the last foreshadowing. This is the last time I'm going to use this conduit power for a little while. So uh, let's make it fucking count. <laughs> I love this power. It's another two. This is impossible. <laughs> wow. Someone screenshot this. Okay, how many rolls have I done now? Uh, we had... A six. Six, ten, five, five, two, two, eight. Keep going! She's just not a very deceptive person. More. This is on a straight up and down d20. I can't roll over a ten. That's a 50% chance to roll over a ten. <laughs> and that's a botch. <laughs> that's a botch. Okay, this this is perfect. This is beautiful. Let it go. Another botch. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> So wait, how many levels are you at at this point? Okay, now it's a crit. Okay, I'm gonna have to make the the count and see what 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 consequence I got there. So my standard <laughs> roll, uh, <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight re rolls there to get that twenty. Okay, so let me pull up the exhaustion table. Didn't think I was doing that today. Um, Holy <laughs> shit! I'm loving the mental image of this too, where it's just you. Like, well, hold on. <laughs> Well, hold on. Well, hold on. Oh. <laughs> just, just turn, just turn to this imaginary bartender. Being, Light him up. Um, so, uh, give me a minute. Thankfully, my downtime scene's not much longer because I have disadvantage on ability checks. My speed is halved. I have disadvantage on attack uh, saving uh, attack rolls and saving throws, and my hit point maximum is halved. But I crit and have s- sold him on the fact that I did know who uh, did remember his name. Wow. I love someone's getting laid tonight. <laughs> the first person in history to drink to remember someone's name. Um, so you turn and you convince Ragnar that you knew his name the whole time and you were just bluffing to protect his identity, and he appreciates that. And he says, Let me walk you back through your ship, Captain. We have much to discuss. Uh, we <laughs> uh, that we do. That we do. Uh, so he, you know, holds out a hand for you. And we, you just keep getting led around. I don't know why it keeps happening. Uh, maybe you're just you're someone who g- inspires that in people. Uh, in, uh, easy camaraderie. He walks you back to the Snallygaster, uh, maybe back to uh, the, the ship's controls, because you're going to leave soon. Um, and once he has you settled in, he reaches into his pocket and pulls something out and hands it to you. Um, as much as I appreciate the offer, um, I'm about to have a bit of a... Let's say things are about to get very busy for me for a little while. I'm certainly not uh, not shutting this door entirely, but now is not a great time for me. I have an awful lot going on in the very immediate future. I am sorry to hear this, but I think you are going to want to see what I am trying to show you. And he baps you on the snout with it. <laughs> what is it? Uh, it is his badge, because he is a undercover cop. Oh, shit. Yes. Surprise. Well. (laughs) Ah, shit. (laughs) This is, this is, ah, should have, should have fucking seen this, shouldn't I? (laughs) Uh, so who else has a downtime scene they want to do? Me, 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 me. All right. So first, I'm going to talk about what I got for my low below. Mm-hmm. I got some shit. It's cool. I got five more hit points. Yay. I got a proficiency bonus. Um, my bardic inspiration die have gone up to a d8 instead of a d6 now. Uh, and I got two spells at a level three spell slot. So I got two level three spell slots. I took non-detection, 
which for the duration, which is eight hours, I hide a target that I touch from divination magic. It can be a willing creature or a place or an object no larger than 10 feet in any dimension. And it can't be seen with any divination magic or like scrying. Doing a sneak. Yeah, doing a sneak. So I specifically had Objectivus in mind, honestly. Mm-hmm. And then the other spell I got was Bestow Curse. Uh, so I touch a creature. They have to succeed in a wisdom saving throw or they are cursed. Uh, at a level three spell slot, it's one minute, but it goes up as you use higher spell slots. Um, but I can either like give them disadvantage on ability checks or give them a disadvantage on attack rolls. Or a bunch of other cool shit. Do extra damage. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways, do a spooky curse. Spooky. Yes. For my downtime scene, I want to do some crazy shit. Uh, I want to go back to Hypatia and I want to try to befriend the sun dragon. That's the one that's not going to murder me on sight, right? Correct. There is a sun dragon and a moon dragon. On Hypatia, you have been informed that the moon dragon does not want to meet you. It, <laughs> we often talk about on Dice Funk how uh, alignments are not like set in stone. They're more of like tendencies of culture. But the moon dragon is evil for what that's worth in our context. And the sun dragon is good. Um, before I go, though, I would like to do some research in my library, uh, because I'm a librarian, and basically what I'm trying to get Austin to give me is I want to roll history, uh, to see, to know everything that I can about the Sun Dragon before I go, and I'm trying to fish for advantage, because I'm a librarian. (laughs) Um, why don't you just, why don't you just roll? I got a 12. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so sun dragons are good aligned dragons, which just means normally that they aren't uh, wantonly destructive. Their culture is generally one of, you know, they, ha- they have empathy and compassion and kindness and so forth. Their natural habitat is the sun or suns, stars, I guess is probably what I should have said. Uh, so they are basically totally immune to heat and fire. Um, they, uh, this particular sun dragon we used to live on Gloria on the light side and the moon dragon used to live on Gloria on the dark side. Naturally, that's where they are best suited to live. But because they are giant, incredibly powerful, ancient, intelligent creatures, they very much spooked the locals. Uh, you know, dragons, When whenever there's a dragon, someone wants to slay it. Someone wants to take its scales to make stuff out of. Someone wants to prove uh, that they can tame it or whatever. And it was just a total hassle. So when Hypatia, the animal sanctuary, was opened, uh, they were invited to come hang out there where they would be far away from humans and left to their own devices and basically have free reign to eat any number of extra creatures once the endangered creatures' populations was stabilized. Okay. Do they have any favorite snacks or presents? Um, hmm. Good question. If... I were to bring him a present. Otherwise, I'm going to make up some dumb shit. I imagine that it was hard to find the information just because they are so ancient and powerful and smart that th- th- no one even knows what could impress them. It's like, what, if you ask me, like, what would impress a human? It's just like, okay, yeah, I don't know. But honestly, I'm, I'm really excited to hear you come up with something. It's going to be bad. I'm into it. All right, so... I think I'm going to bring him some Flamin' Hot Cheetos and, like, a, a little heating pad or something, like an Icy Hot. <laughs> okay. Because they're, like, hot things. Yeah, fair. And uh, I'm going to bring courage with me just in case so I don't get murdered. Yeah, in addition to being a highly trained commando who can protect you, uh, courage is the conduit of courage and can uh, give you... I don't want to say the word courage for a third time. He can allow you to resist the fear effect, which being in the presence of a dragon inflicts on other creatures. So the, Good. in D&D, just being near a dragon forces you to run away in fear unless you can meet the saving throw. But courage uh, imbues you with, I'm going to say courage again for the fifth time, uh, to resist <laughs> that effect. In addition, he'll just be a bodyguard for you. So you guys are going to uh, land the Snallygaster at the nearest ranger station I'm and walk over to the... Also bringing some frozen fish for Nessie. Okay. So, I mean, Nessie can't talk. So we just want to say off screen, you just go and give Nessie some fish. Yeah, and Petter, I just want that to be in there. It's very important. Okay. Courage says, animal, not cryptid? Sometimes animals can be cryptids. Disappointed? 
no, I'm excited. I have a new friend and she's cool. And yeah, she's an animal, but that doesn't mean she's not a cool cryptic friend. Do you see any more? I don't. Friendship more? Cryptids? That's the goal. Courage, that's my goal. He nods, <laughs> and you guys head over to the Sun Dragon enclosure. Um, why don't you make a survival check to move through this uh, environment? I hope the Flaming Hop Cheetos protect me. Yeah, predators are famously afraid of them. I am. <laughs> I rolled a, oh, I rolled a five. You sure do. So you're making your way through the sun dragon habitat, which is a craggy, uh, like mountain, basically. It's not a very tall one, but it's enough where you can stand atop it as a great dragon and look down upon your kingdom. And as you make your way over the, this uh, rough landscape, uh, you feel a tremble in the ground. And Courage says, wait, Danger. What kind of danger can can you tell? Um, before courage can answer, the l- rumbling gets louder and louder, and then the ground explodes. Is it a tremor? I knew it. Uh, it's a neolithid, the jo- <gasps> the hundred and twenty foot long serpent that illithid tadpoles turn into if they are not implanted, and it does rip out of the ground much like a worm in Dune or a tremor, because those are all the same creature. <laughs> the science fiction writers only have so many ideas. What do I roll to write it? Uh, well, you rolled a five to avoid its attack, so it eats courage. He'll be fine. Okay. You don't think he's gonna cut himself out of his stomach? I don't know. What do you do? So the Neolithid bursts out of the ground. It is a uh, just an incredibly long worm. Its mouth has the kind of quadripartite uh, flower thing. If you've ever seen Stranger Things, you know that like that mouth that they have. It kind of looks like a flower. Yeah. It has that. And outside, uh, I- inside of its gaping maw, inside of that flower part, there are a bunch of spiny te- tendrils that it grabs courage with and yanks him inside and its mouth closes. All right, I'm going to attack with my rapier. Mm-hmm. Um, 14, does that hit? Sure does not. You just run forward and you jam your rapier into its side and it, the the hard light blade bends against its tough carapace. Uh, what do I, I'll roll a history to know what the fuck this is or arcana? Nature. It's an animal. Nature. It's an animal. Yeah, that's the other one that I forgot existed. Nope. I rolled a six. A six. You have no idea. You know that you just think it's a big objectivist. <sighs> then that means I wouldn't want to throw a grenade down its throat. That follows. All right. All right. Dissonant whispers. Uh, that is a fuck. That is a fuck. That is a wisdom saving throw. Uh, four. Fuck you. Uh, that is 3d6 damage. To 12 damage. All right, so you use Dissonant Whispers, you pull out your sitar, and you strum, and the thing begins convulsing and shaking its head under your psychic assault. And I think you realize that this is not like, not like Objectivist, the creature you know who is smart and has thoughts and opinions. This is just an animal. It is as smart as maybe a snake. Okay. And it is it does not have the intelligence or the wisdom to shake off your assault and it is extremely bothered by this. I don't know how you feel about coming face to face with what could be your son uh, stripped of his intelligence, but I imagine it's pretty upsetting. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Mm-hmm. Change my opinion on that. Courage, if you're in there and you can hear me, get yourself out. <laughs> um, I, mean- I don't want to grenade you. Uh, you see uh, the, there's occasional pokes against the inside, but remember, this thing is 120 feet long, which means its its body has to be extremely thick, right? Mm-hmm. Like, just stabbing through it, like, carriage is trying, but it's it's difficult. This thing is like, what if a, you know, a subway train came to life, and it's extremely powerful. Um, I'm just going to throw a grenade down its throat. All right. And hope for the best. That's 8d6 damage. All right, roll it. 29. Hell Yeah. Holy shit, Sasha. Um, so t- describe it to me. You tell me what you do. Um, well, its stupid mouth is open, I'm assuming, going, because I fucked with its head. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just going to do the biggest eat I've ever done, Kobe that right into its mouth, and I just put it down its throat. My goal is to blow it up so that courage can get out without hopefully fucking up courage. Yep. 
All right, so the grenade explodes inside of it and you rip a hole in the side of this neolithid and it begins convulsing and spraying out kind of blackish greenish blood and viscera out of this hole gross uh it is extremely unhappy as it turns to make a counterattack. uh there is a shadow that falls over this scene oh no i made the dragon mad as a sun dragon comes down out of the sky and slams two claws down into the neolithid pinning it beneath its even mightier body um what do you do about that before i describe this dragon uh i'm gonna look at the dragon i'm gonna look at the hole in the neolithid and say courage can you hear me uh this dragon uh firmly pins the neolithid to the ground and regards you it is a long chinese style dragon i mean dragons aren't a real creature but different cultures have different ideas what they should look like but this is a long serpent uh which has four legs no wings and its legs are pretty far the front and back legs are pretty far apart along this long serpentine body and its head has a couple of notable features you don't see on western dragons one it has appears to be a big mustache like two long i love those guys two long wiggly things and then it also has huge antlers thank you for the assistance your majesty <laughs> uh notably i am t- taking a lot of liberties with the way sun dragons and moon dragons are in the Spelljammer book all that stuff that they wrote is bad and i'm not using it uh but the one thing i'm going to take is that the coloration on this creature is a yellowish reddish reddish orange it's uh, along its body it's like a gradient from yellow to red with an orange in the middle that's it that's its coloration but i'm changing almost everything else because it's basically just a fire breathing red dragon and everything else but we're, we're using a chinese style sun dragon um and you yell out for courage and you hear well you don't hear because they speak in logical impulses but courage says back boom <laughs> yeah i did that for you there's a hole in the side now get out uh courage crawls his way out of the wound in the side of the neolithid as the sun dragon picks up this mighty serpent in its jaws and begins eating it. I'm cool with that. Dragon gotta eat. Yeah. If it weren't for the courageous effect you get from Courage's Conduit, you would be, you would mechanically have to flee in terror at this point. So I want to point out that that, that is the thing you're avoiding. Thank you, Courage. Uh, is his shell okay? Yeah, he's fine. Okay. I'm gonna wipe some goo off of him with like a rag. Mm-hmm. Clean him up. We can't look bad in front of the sun dragon. Yeah. Um, as he's eating this Neolithid, and I, w- I just want to again say the Neolithid is such a, a phenomenally huge and powerful creature that I don't know even if all of you, the entire party in mechs could have took it in a fight. And the sun dragon just owned it like it was nothing. Okay. So I should be running afraid of him, but. Absolutely. Um, yes. Thank you. Yeah. he Like they live on the surface of the sun. There's like just no bigger flex than that. Right. Like it's just weird flex, but okay. The animal. I'm hoping that me not running away makes me look real cool to the dragon. (laughs) Yeah, after it's a couple bites in, I think it finally kills the Neolithid. And then it looks up and it says to you uh, in a deep, booming voice. Hello, tiny adventurer. Yes, I'm very small. Thank you for your help. I was actually on my way to maybe come visit you. Interesting. What do they call you? My name is Sasha Greer. You can just call me Sasha. And I'm the conduit of conspiracy. Well met. I am Kajita, conduit of perfection. I can see your scales are lovely. Um, I know it's silly, but I brought you some small gifts from my ship. We don't have anything grand, but I know you like hot things being from the sun and all. (laughs) Uh, so I brought you some, a spicy snack and these cool patches you can put on and it like warms you up. Uh, he takes your presence gingerly in a claw. It's like a very uh, strange delicacy he can move with for his size and ferocity. And he says, these will make excellent additions to my hoard. I've heard that dragons like hordes. That's good to know. <laughs> some of my brethren treasure jewels i crave novelty let me play something for you Uh uh-oh 
Uh, this used to be an EMP, but uh. now it's just a fun button. Not. Ha 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 delightful. I'll have to come back and visit you sometime and we'll we'll play the nut button. <laughs> so you're not giving him your nut button? I'm gonna give him my nut button. I can get more. Alright, so you give your nut button to Kajita. That's K-A-J-I-T-A. Nut. Ha <laughs> ha. Still funny. <laughs> That's for you. You're how should I address you? Kajita. <laughs> That's for you, Kajita. Hopefully we can be pals. Thank you. Yeah, I just, um, I want to, I, I know, I'm a librarian. I like knowledge. And, you know, I think who has more knowledge than a sun dragon, right? <laughs> it would be uncouth to boast. But I appreciate your sentiment. You can boast around me. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> Such behavior is more appropriate for my counterpart. Oh, the moon dragon? The dastardly Volhard. I actually don't know really much about moon dragons. Would you like to tell me all about them? All there is to know is that you will not survive such an encounter, whether encased in black frost or eaten alive and screaming. Volhard brooks no visitors. What's his deal? What is the deal of a hurricane or an earthquake? They simply destroy. Well, that's no fun. I mean, I guess it's fun for Volhard, but... I mean, why destroy when it's so much more fun to create? When you have lived as long as us... Perhaps you have created all that you can, and at the limits of your abilities, there is only time and cruelty. Well, you don't seem cruel. I have many abilities. And how do you like it here on Hypatia? A bit cold for my tastes, but many novel life forms to meet and taste. Next time I'll need to bring you an electric blanket. <laughs> so thoughtful. Well, I like to, you know, bring my friends gifts, and hopefully we can be friends. I would like that. Me too. Thank you again for saving us from the Neolithid, and for, you know, entertaining our conversation. I guess my conversation. Courage hasn't really said much, but he's a cool dude. <laughs> he's trying to act stoic, but he's covered... I mean, you clean him off, and he was eaten by a giant creature and covered in slime. He's probably just trying to hold it together. Yeah. How, how do you feel about visitors? On the regular, the frequency of visitors. Um, I might want to introduce you to the rest of my crew someday. I am always welcoming of new experiences. And you won't eat any of my friends? <laughs> Even if they're jerks? <laughs> we shall see. I do demand a certain level of respect. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Let me know. On, I'll, I'll try to get more uh, hot gifts for you. That sounds gross. <laughs> um. Oh man, I love a hot gift. Everybody on this call, <laughs> what's your favorite hot gift? I gotta say, mine is chili. <laughs> uh, oh, I should bring him chili next time. I like a good spicy lentil soup. Ooh. Indian food, in general. Uh, butter chicken, it's a little bit spicy. Mm. Eggnog chai tea latte. Get out of here, Chris. It's so good. It's season. It's the season for it again. For the Chegnog. No, it's true, though. It does sound delicious. For the Chegnog. Chegnog. Conrad, any hot gifts? Hot gifts? Okay. I'm sorry. It's that hot drink song by Wendy's. Hot drinks? Is it Wendy's? Yes. Yes. Is this an advertising campaign? Yes. Hot drinks. Really get you going. Do you have any jokes to add to this scene about hot gifts, or are you just going to pass on this one? No, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have anything else? Uh, he's, he's basically done. I think actually Courage wants to talk to you on the way back. Yeah, I think my main scene was to get him on our side, just in case. Yeah, in case maybe there's some kind of conflict, 
maybe between the sun and the moon dragon, which are opposed. Which apparently I didn't know was going to happen, but... Yeah, weird. I'm just on that level, I guess. Um, yeah, I will give a deep bow. <laughs> with, like, the, the arm flourish. Like, uh-huh. Dear Kajita, goodbye. Goodbye, small friend. I'll be back with some hot chili. <laughs> I do so enjoy a chili. It sounds like it's gonna be cold, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the nut button. Oh my god. And you just hear, as you leave, you just hear in the distance. Nut, nut, nut. Yes, exactly. Um, Courage wants to say to you on your walk back, though, that bother you seeing big objectivists? Uh, I believe the clinical term is shooketh. Mm. But yes, uh... I understand now why when I suggested he turn into that, that he didn't like the idea of that. Um, that was not, that's just like a big scary animal. That's not a smart thinking, like my baby boy. But, oh boy, do I have a moral quandary coming up, Courage. And on that note, we have one more downtime scene. Oh boy, is it me? Nope, <laughs> it's Big Star, and I will be playing the role of Big Star. Yay, Big Star! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Can Big Star talk to his twin brother, Funk Star? <laughs> <laughs> That's a spin-off podcast where me and Chris just make weird voices at each other. Hello, hell! <laughs> I can't keep up with that. Uh, I, thought that I, th- I thought we were going to insert a clip. No. Okay. All right. Conrad, you are now yeah. level five paladin. How does that do? Drag is now a level five paladin, so he got his uh, proficiency bonus increase. He also gets a new extra attack, so he can be doing double fist and punching, I guess. Uh, he also uh, got uh, new spells. I don't think I actually added spells at some point when I was supposed to, but eh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> he now he got two, uh, two level two spell slots, uh, and he has prepared aid and magic weapon. He's a very helpful guy. He also got uh, nine more hit points, I think, or eight, eight more hit points. So he's up to 42. So he's uh, still a big boy. Um, and for downtime, he's going to spend some time with Big Star, because uh, Big Star is an engineer, and he has uh, he he wants some thoughts about how we could perhaps improve security measures on the Snallygaster to prevent people from just showing up on our ship, and you know them needing to be murdered. <laughs> yes, Big Star has many thoughts about that. He says, <laughs> "Your defenses for aerial combat are impeccable. Such a good job, Drag. But once grounded, this." Ship is quite a sitting duck. We're going to need to shore up these doors and the hangar bay and maybe put some Home Alone style traps in the corridors, my friend. Traps are easily triggered by idiots. (laughs) Ah, yes. With this uh, motley crew, perhaps that would do more damage to us than them. Good thinking. But some form of notification system alerts when people board. Or disembark. Yes, I believe that the condiment. I believe with the conduit of communication. You, you, <laughs> the condiment. Fuck! I was. I can't cut it out now. Now they're all gonna hear because they're gonna know. <laughs> I, you know you dunked on me. Sorry. With the conduit of communication, uh, objectivists can inform you. It appears that they just didn't bother because they handled it so thoroughly. But if if we have a new protocol on the ship that you are to be notified immediately, that won't be a problem at all. Yes, we should implement something external from Objectivus. Sounds good. Um, I have some ideas of how we could fix this, but I'm going to need some uh, scrap parts before I get to work as our new shipwright. Do you want to accompany me down to the scrapyard? Yes. We shall go. We will find your parts. So you guys are going to take a little jaunt. You assume you're on Gloria because that is the most... uh, the place where the party is most welcome and there's the most facilities is the best place to make repairs. So you guys are going to walk down to like the Gloria scrapyard. Uh, do you guys talk about anything on the way there? Oh, I think we probably will. Yeah, I think it would be a good time to have a conversation. I love to talk. Oh, I love to talk too. It's so enlightening. Um, you have 
Traveled this galaxy sometime. Yes, uh, Dr. Adler and I, we used to travel around with, I guess you'd call him our mentor. Uh, we had many adventures before our lives took a different turn. Your, uh, mentor. Yes, uh, I don't know if she's spoken of him. He, uh, passed, unfortunately, and we were set adrift for some time. Metaphorically, not in space. I understand how that could be confusing if I leave that ambiguous. But, uh, eventually... Yes. <laughs> but eventually, uh, after that di difficult period in our lives, we recommitted ourselves to helping people, and I got the job as a park ranger, and she became the ship's medic, and I believe you know the rest. I do not know the rest. Ah, <laughs> uh, is that because they keep you at arm's length? You don't seem a particularly gregarious fellow, Drag, but I sense there's more to you than you let on. I would not know. I am fairly straightforward. Hmm. But I am interested to know about your adventures. <laughs> Olivia seems quite competent. Oh, yes, the doctor learned from the best. Uh, our mentor was a surgeon of incredible skill. And uh, I, don't, I don't know about all that. I am a man of wires and consoles, but my understanding is the two of them unstoppable together, so... You must have both been very upset at the passing of your mentor. Of course. Inconsolable. It was a dark period. I... <laughs> I, the, perhaps the best way to summarize would be I lost my arm, and it was not the worst thing that happened to me <laughs> around that time, if that tells you anything. Well, how did he die? It is difficult to talk about. Perhaps Adler could fill you in more directly. I don't know if it's my place. Place does not matter. <laughs> it matter not if I'm told here or on the ship. Are you the security officer or the ship's philosopher? I am the security officer. I saw your moves in the mech. Are you sure you're not secretly a pilot? No, I am the security officer. <laughs> Would you like to be a pilot? No. <laughs> you're a man of simple needs, Drake. I want comfort, like everyone. Do you not desire comfort an easy life? Some days, some days I wake up and don't want to get out of bed at all, and some days I can't wait to greet the day and shoot it full of holes. It, these things come and go, these passions. Hmm. I too lost a mentor. I still do not know where I am going. I'm sorry to hear that. We have that in common. It's difficult, but strengthening of character. And what will you do without your master? Well, I was going to watch after animals and make sure that I didn't get into any shenanigans, but that went a different way. <laughs> so, And you found this satisfying? Shepherding weak things. <laughs> I okay. I spent most of my time in the garage fixing up sprinkler systems and camera drones and uh, medical equipment, not so much the shepherding. Um, my main qualification was the engineering and the genetic predisposition to be to not being able to become lost. So you like to work with your hands. Hand, yes. <laughs> I too like to work with my hands. There's comfort in that. It feels good to touch. To feel something. Good. <laughs> this is long walk. <laughs> As you say that, you so you're talking about just the feeling of a hard day's work and getting in there and being uh, make physical uh, mastery over your environment and your work, and uh, make a perception check. Sixteen. Damn, that's really good. Uh, so you guys walk. Is you're walking in the scrapyard between uh, giant piles of broken down ships and cars and disassembled radios and all that kind of good stuff you find in the scrapyard. And with a 16, you know you are being watched and followed here. Carry on as though nothing has happened. Just keep moving. But uh, 
try to maintain aware of awareness of what's happening around him. All right. Uh, so you're you're keeping situational awareness and carrying on as if you don't know you're being followed. Mm -hmm. And as you uh, come up to the edge of a particularly large pile of junk, uh, you know that you are about to be ambushed uh, if you go past the edge of this pile. But only if I go past the edge of this pile. Yeah. If with your if you if you had failed that check, this is the part where you get ambushed. You succeeded, so you know that it's about to happen. Well, he'll stop. <laughs> Mm hmm. Drake stops and stands there and. Cowards! You smell them? <laughs> Big Star? Yeah. <laughs> hmm, does he? Let me make a perception check with Big Star. Uh, 10. No, he does not. He says. <laughs> rotting leather? Yes. Smell of rotting leather. Also, that guy. <laughs> points over his shoulder <laughs> all right so the things following you uh reveal themselves there are two of them and they are called umber hulks do you know what that is Ooh. i do not know what that is please they're big bug people aren't they oh they're big bug people they are extremely large in fact any other season i'd say they're they tower over you but it's big star and drag so they're about your size seven or eight feet or so uh they are extremely broad muscular humanoid beetles which are a kind of brownish gold um they are extremely strong extremely stout they have a kind of uh, hunched over gait almost like gorillas i think that the concept of them is like what if gorillas were beetles hmm. or what if beetles were gorillas uh you know as almost everyone does in this universe that they are they are an integral part of neogi culture um in some cultures like let's say take some human examples when you, someone becomes like an adult, you have like a quinceanera or your bar mitzvah and you become a man or a woman of bat mitzvah in the yogi culture. When you become an adult, you get an umber Hulk mm. who is your kind of servant. I mean, let's not sugarcoat it. Your slave. They are mentally dominated and they do everything for you. They do your physical labor. They take care of you. They do your dishes and laundry and they kill people for you. Every, basically every yogi has an umber Hulk. And in addition to being huge and powerful, uh, they have one special ability, which is if you make eye contact with them, it scrambles your mind. It makes it hard to fight back. Hmm. You can choose not to make eye contact, though. Yeah, that would be a good choice, I would think, to choose not to make eye contact. Yeah, so there's uh, a Umber Hulk walks out from behind the trash in front of you, and one walks out from the trash behind you. Uh, they do not ambush you, so they don't get a, to get to go first because you knew they were coming. But they definitely seem like they're here to to beat the shit out of you. I'm gonna make an intimidation check. All right. No nine. I am not very intimidating. No, you are not against these. No. Ask Big Star for an assist. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Big, Big Star will try to make an intimidation as well. Uh, five. Damn. Ooh. So you, you, guys, yes. you guys kind of post up back to back. He has his gun arm yeah. and you have your big shield. And they are not intimidated. Roll initiative. Okay. Seven. Yikes. Eleven. All right. You go first, Dreg. I'm going to put up my shield and uh, and charge in for a, a punching, uh, a, a glancing Blow with the shield followed by a, a punch on the right with my two attacks at whichever one I am facing. Uh, first attack is 17. Hits. Second attack is seven. That's a botch. Oh, that is a botch. Well, that's very unfortunate. All right, roll damage. 12 damage. All right, so you run forward and you punch one of the Umber Hulks in the face with your shield, but then you botch, and so you accidentally make eye contact coming out of that uh no that fight and you are it's like you're just staring into a staticky television screen your whole like sense of place gets scrambled uh big star is going to make an assist he's going to shoot the umber hulk twice eight and 12 both those miss so uh he can't make eye contact actually disadvantage because he's looking away so he's firing yeah that's two misses uh big star is just firing wildly in this junkyard at these umber hulks and you are scrambled and he can't seem to hit one because he can't look it's not looking great and now it's ember umber hulk's turn uh, first one's going to attack you, Drag. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God, a botch and a 26. So the botch happens first and it rips its own arm off, right? 
<laughs> and then it can only do half damage on the. Yeah. Uh, actually, what happens is the Umber Hulk picks up a discarded toilet in the scrapyard and chucks it at you, Drag. You duck and it hits the other Umber Hulk. Excellent. Take that. All right. So Umber Hulk takes 11 and Drag takes eight as it then turns and hits you with its fist. And then the other Umber Hulk's going to attack okay. Big Star. 20 and crit. Oh, shit. Oh no, Big Star. What if the crit was for Big Star instead? <laughs> Big Star takes 33 damage. Holy shit. The Umber Hulk picks up an engine block and clocks Big Star over the back of the head with it, split, no. splitting his scalp open. Your turn, Dreg. Whoa. Uh, I am going to lay on hands on Big Star. Yeah. That's my action. And I'm going to restore him for all 15 hit points I can give him. Uh, Big Star says, maybe we could take one of them, but two, they're enormous and unstoppable. <laughs> they're so powerful, Dreg. We need to think of something else besides f straight up fighting. You're the engineer. You're the protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> What would happen if they looked in each other's eyes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell, Conrad. I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a book. Where is it? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would think that they would be immune to their own ability. You would think, but then again... Oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, hold on. It says, okay, confusing gaze. When a creature starts its turn within 30 feet of the Umber Hulk. It doesn't say when a non-Umber Hulk. It says when a creature. Okay. Even if you can find a book that disagrees, in our world, that works. Good idea. It, it, the, the, the plan would be to move Dreg around behind mm -hmm. uh, one of them, the one he's closest to, like literally behind it. Yep. And then cast Command on the other one to look at me. Oh shit, yeah. All right, so that's a wisdom saving throw? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Eight. Well, that's not gonna work. <laughs> now that fails. So Dreg, your brilliant plan works. You do a quick spin move, get around behind the Umber Hulk, and then use your command to make them look at each other. And they have scrambled each other's minds. Holy shit. I think it's time we go. All right, so you're just gonna hoof it? Yeah, we're hoofing it. All right, uh, athletics checks to to book. Jesus Christ, I botched. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! So big star crit, you didn't botch because you rolled a d10. I needed a d20. Shit, I rolled the wrong die. Oh, yeah. thank God. Whew! <laughs> That's better, 21. All right, 21 and a crit. So big star and drag start Barry Sandersing out of this <laughs> scrapyard. They do a juke, they do a spin move, they do a stiff arm. They're just absolutely kicking ass. And what happens when Big Star crits, which is why Chris is flipping out, is he activates his conduit of awe. <laughs> which is everyone is so fucking impressed by how cool he is, he gets to inflict a status effect on people who see it. So I think the effect is fear on the umber hulks they are fucking they even though their minds are scrambled they are wash a wave of awe like seeing the face of god washes over them and they just run screaming into the scrapyard terrified uh and there's another there are actually two more witnesses you weren't aware of and that is the niyogi on the well, edge of I, I, I mean i, I sort of figure <laughs> yeah on the edge of the scrapyard who are controlling their thralls um, another way of winning this fight would be have to have run away and beat these guys' ass. You can run by them right now and escape, though. But there are two Neogi, which, once again, are like spiders, wolf spiders with the heads of eels. And they come up to about, like, a human's knees. There are two of them, like, peering over an, a refrigerator on the edge of the scrapyard. But these aren't our Neogi from Pell 3, right? These are different Neogi. Actually, you act, You know what? You think these are, these are guys trying to get revenge. You killed their friend. Uh, they are my slaves by their culture. Well, e even if that was the case, I'm pretty sure they're Captain Melbeck's slaves, I think. Well, that's, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Either way. I mean, Americans have a culture of accepting immigrants. We have a whole statue about it, but sometimes people don't live up to their culture. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh, sniggity snap. Austin, real quick, I want to make a canon that whenever Big Star's conduit goes off, uh, pyros, like a wrestling entrance, go off around him. 
All right, so do you want to do anything with these Neogi? Because um, Big Star can inflict a status effect on them if you want, in addition to anything you want to do. So it's basically, this is your canvas to paint upon. Actually, you know what? No, there's, it's even more insulting to completely disregard them. Oh, okay. I'm just going to run right past. So instead, Big Star inflicts stun, and they're just stunned mm -hmm. by your physical and mental power that you outsmarted and then outran <laughs> their t anything they had... A expected of you and they are left just gawping in your wake like damn those are two big boys <laughs> <laughs> and big boy season was a success big boy season is always a success of course we didn't get what we came for so there's that I, I assume later you guys can go back, but the important thing was you guys know the Neogi are out for revenge and you know they have Umber Hulks to fight for them yeah not great yeah, but off screen, you guys can get get the scrap you were looking for and fix up the Snallygaster's defenses to keep it from being stolen. Yay! So you guys get back, everyone gets back to the Snallygaster after an eventful time off. I, I get back, do I? <laughs> um, so Ragnar tells you that he is an undercover cop. Uh, he is trying to bring down the Caravella crime family, and he has r roped you in to being... An informant. He wants you to work for Entrapment! them. Entrapment. Um. Entrapment. Uh. Honest. Um. <laughs> Captain Melbeck's response to this is just going to be, "It should be fairly apparent to you when you were trying to put something in my face. It was very clear. I thought you were trying to get me back on board with this whole smuggling thing, and my response was to not engage because I'm just going to put it this way. I'm well aware that what I did was." Very foolish, and I have spent the entirety of today trying to find the most diplomatic way to back the fuck out of it. So, this this is a method that works by me. You are on board with infiltrating Caravella organization and bringing them down? This is the moment where I, as the player, suddenly go, maybe it's a double-double cross, and actually they're not a, an undercover police officer. Maybe they do still work for- That's what I was just thinking, too! And by saying, yes, I will, I will infiltrate them, I'm now going to get murdered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping Austin's not playing that 3D chess on me. I mean, Ragnar just tells you, <laughs> I genuinely like you. I do not want to do it this way. However, it is standard protocol. I am opting to say that this is the easy route because I wanted to back the fuck out of this already. Mm -hmm. You know, the only real shame is that I didn't make a new friend. As the entire reason I went out was trying to make a new friend. So uh, I'm more than happy to, uh, to to go along with this. But uh, no, my disappointment is not that I'm having to, do, having to do all this. My disappointment is that I didn't make a new friend. You really hurt me there. You really hurt me. He's undercover. Like, what the? F what's he gonna do to you? I mean, he says he can have your adventuring license pulled. Well, o okay, but then his cover's blown, and he's gonna get killed by the caravel. There are options. Like, I could, if I wanted to, I could threaten. I could just go back to him and tell him that you you are undercover in his organization, and that probably wouldn't work out well for him. <laughs> That's role playing, baby. You can do anything you want. That's not what I'm doing, but my point is his claim that I have that he's taken my choices away. No, he hasn't, though. <laughs> Ragnar says, I will be honest. I try to keep a professional distance from contacts and sources. However, I do genuinely like you. You are a charismatic, wonderful person to be around. I find you quite likable. You say, you say this, but our, our uh, any friendship we would have had has started off on the foot of you entirely misleading me, and I've got enough friends across the galaxy that I don't need to compromise and make uh, personal connections necessarily with someone who uh, has not only not only misled me from the start, but also is try, trying to... No, I, I, I put it this way, I'm willing to do this, but you were, you wanted to coerce me into doing it, so, you know... That's not a great basis for a friendship. Sorry about that. Don't see it happening. This is going to be a business relationship and nothing more. Everything you have said is correct. And I have to admit, I too had my reservations. Uh, this entire assignment was predicated on people assuming I was a criminal because of my heritage, my species, my accent. 
Uh, people buy it hook, line, and sinker. Of course, Drow is criminal, and it is degrading. For what it's worth, it, that's not why I thought you were a criminal. I thought you were a criminal because you told me you were a criminal, and honestly, <laughs> I saw no reason for you to make up that lie to me. We, you just helped me at a bar. I was looking to make a friend. I, I like to see the best in people. And if that means believing them when they tell me they're a criminal, then that's me seeing the best in them. I believe you 100%, which is why I must express sincere regret that we have gotten here in this manner. In another life, we could have been genuine friends from the start. However, I must protect Markov, and sacrifices have to be made from time to time. Not everyone is as understanding as you. The fact that my day of trying to back out of this whole situation hasn't landed me up in prison or dead could have gone worse. Today could have gone worse. If it gets any better, you'll go home with a big shiny metal. <laughs> uh, well, at least now I'm in a situation where I can probably tell somewhat of what's going on to my crew, which is a net positive. <laughs> In fact, let's talk about the next two missions, because we will end this recording session once you guys have picked one of the two new things you're going to do. Is everyone ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there are two missions ahead of you. Uh, I'm just going to do them in uh, alphabetical order for the planets. The first mission is on the planet Gloria. You guys have been there. Half light, half dark. Uh, it's not actually illegal what's happening, but there is a cult on the light side of Gloria. And it would be useful for Earth's interests if you were to infiltrate it and extract a VIP who has fallen under its thrall. Uh, this person is important politically. You'll know more if you accept this mesh if you accept this mission. Uh, we can't tell you now because if you know and then you don't pick it and you get captured, that information can be tortured out of you. Uh, it's dark, but the point is, uh, go to the light side of Gloria, infiltrate a solitaire cult, and extract the VIP. That is the first mission. Okay. The second mission is on Pell 3, the moon uh, that we have talked about a lot this episode. We talked about the Caravella crime family. We talked about the mysterious Maxwells, the huge mountain-sized slugs. Uh, the mission actually doesn't have anything to do with either of those. The mission is, there has been a mysterious death in Drake City. Uh, so mysterious, authorities are assuming it's a murder. Um, the MO is so bizarre that the the details are being withheld from you until you accept this mission. I'm keeping both the, no! I'm keeping both the VIP info and the murder info from you until you pick them because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, but... It, assuming it is a murder, uh, they need to be whoever did it needs to be stopped. Um, but it is a, such a strange murder that it needs to be investigated, and hopefully the killer stopped if there is a killer because something real weird is happening on Pell Three. Those are both so juicy. I am someone who's extremely critical of my own work. I gotta tell you, both these are real juicy. Fuck! You just like they're made just for me. My mind went to the second one. Uh, murder, my murder, murder, murder. Murder was the case. My thought process, I, I know we'll probably still deal with some part of it, but in my mind, I just, like, my mind's like, oh, the cult should be handled by, like, a SWAT team or something like that. Like, we're not going to be the best people to <laughs> infiltrate that. And the cult's going to be around. That's not going anywhere. This murder thing, there could be more killings. Yeah. Uh, out of character, my thinking is, um, for this, for this cult one, uh, the VIP feels like leverage. Like, I feel like they're not going to haphazardly kill their VIP for no reason. Um, which feels like that's that's maybe something that we have some more, some more leeway time-wise to get them out safely versus more killings might happen. I'm definitely leaning that way. Um, in character, uh, before any of the other crew members say anything, um, Liam Moyer is going to very sort of quickly and decisively go uh of these two we will be taking the bell three mission first uh any objections raise them now no i love a murder we are taking the bell three mission to your stations everyone make it so number one <laughs> engage
At the rate we're going, though, someday the credits are going to be have to be their own show. We're going to have a spinoff show. Yeah, we're going to have to bring somebody else in. It's going to be a whole production. I mean, it's a good problem to have, right? A smarter person would be able to leverage this into some kind of intelligent way besides just being buried under the list, but... Good luck. Thanks. November 2018. Credits. Oh, God, it's already November? Well, what are you thankful for? Turkeys? Almost started crying again. Hold on. <laughs> They're not that cute. They are pretty cute. Uh-huh. But also delicious. That's true. Um, I love turkey gravy on mashed potatoes. That's the shit. And I'm thankful for music, which we have credits for. We have uh, <laughs> the songs that we use this month include Your Reality, Future Bass Remix from Doki Doki Literature Club by The Musical Ghost, Morning Thinker, an arrangement of Thinker from Armored Core 4 by Overclocked Remix, and The Sound of the Galaxy, an arrangement of Freedom's Progress from Mass Effect by Overclocked wow. Remix. Wow. You got <laughs> you really jumped the gun on that one. You said wow out before I was even finished. I know, because I didn't know there was more. There was so much. You're so excited. All right, executive producers for November. There's quite a list. Also, Patreon changed a bunch of things, so I think it's an alphabetical this month instead of whatever oh. system was before. And also a bunch of uh people were declined. So if you're not in the list, I apologize. It is Patreon's fault and not mine. Please be mad at them. I'm doing my best. Yeah, don't make Austin cry. He's a very gentle boy. I'm so fragile. I'm going to read the list of names that they sent me, though. Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. I'll help. Thanks. Uh, first up, we have a rad skeleton with a skateboard, Kiefer Lowe. Wow, I'm jealous. Uh, we have a turkey joke. Going to be that kind of month, huh, folks? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to fucking get us this month. Aki Savalainen. Albert West. Aaliyah. Alex Vepra. Andrew Birmingham. Andrew Fallu, conduit of mediocrity itself. Andrew Grothin. Andy Harkins. Anime Jesus. <laughs> Anna. Anna Michael. Wait, does somebody... I want to know if Anna is actually named Anna or if they... If it's my cat. Oh, your cat supports supports you on Patreon? Well, at least she's supportive of something. I'm, I'm sorry for all the times I called you a nasty little gremlin, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, patron of Dora. Hey, thanks, Anthony. Oh, God, her army grows. Uh, are you there, God? It's me, Bozog. <laughs> no, sorry, I have to do it. Are you there, God? Oh, that's the good shit. Sorry about the audio. <laughs> <laughs> Arjun de Koenig. Artem BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Bristol. Ashley? No, just Ashley. August Rue. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. Austin Porflees. <laughs> Parentheses, donate to my Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean, Porflees? Because it sounds kind of like your ski. Oh, my God. They're getting you so hard this month. I've been destroyed entirely. I like this the next one. It's just a message. Austin. It's all caps. Austin, tell Laura to tell Jim I said hi. <laughs> I'm not a messenger. <laughs> oh, no. More dunkage. Austin Yorsky, conduit of pretentious storytelling itself. See, pretentious is one of those things I say about myself in a nice way, but when someone else says it, it sounds like an insult, so I don't know which one. Also, now that it's an alphabetical, I can see how many start with my name. <laughs> <laughs> Which is brutal. Normally they're peppered throughout, but we just get six Austins in a row here. They love to dunk on you. They really do. Austin Yorsky died to pinwheel twice. How would you know? If you're going to dunk on me for my Soulsborne gameplay, I could not beat the Blood Starved Beast without help. How about those real dunks? I've, I, no one's ever died to pinwheel. It's nonsense. I have no idea what you're talking about. It's a Dark Souls boss. Oh. Brady, conduit of failed murder. <laughs> keep trying brady <laughs> brendan williams wait no don't keep trying brady hold on <laughs> hold on brady please stop legally i'm not allowed to encourage you brendan williams brent every single mcelroy <laughs> goalie dash mcelroy s choir <laughs> really i've never seen anybody spell s choir that way brent <laughs> but honestly. i love it you kind of killed it uh Br Brittany and jermaine walls dual conduits of senseless bickering that's you need to work on that yeah it's either sweet or I'm pulling for you. <laughs> Bruce Wayne, conduit of Batman. Well, you just blew... <laughs> just completely destroyed his secret identity on air. Oh, no. Oh, no, this next one's pretty good. I mean, I, I am excited about reading the name Buster, <laughs> Buster Muffin Half. But I, <laughs> I wanted to go back to Bruce Wayne, conduit of Batman, because if the conduits existed in the DC or Marvel universe, would everyone's completely be busted? Like, you wouldn't be able to just be the Flash in your civilian identity. You would be the conduit of speed and everyone would know. Uh-oh. I feel like no it No more superheroes. Sorry. 
Yeah, we completely destroyed the fiction. Anyway, Buster Muffin Half. Yeah, that did that felt good. I'm glad I got to say it twice. Please don't bust it. Or do. Cam- Cameron Abbas. Carter Rayner. This is going to take six weeks at this rate. Christopher Charlow. Cody Jackson. Quorum. It is a truth university acknowledged that a single man in pose, but it's a null fit. Sorry, Quorum. Counterfeit. Daria Morgan. Don. Donning Frost. Dennis Bankston. Dennis Pancake Detlefson. Devin, Conduit of Evolution. Still holding out for that dragon type, Evie. Oh, shit. This next one is me. Uh, Dorian, <laughs> Conduit of Self-Destruction. <laughs> Grayson. There's an entire subgenre of people who are trying to get Lauren to say same, and it's honestly the best thing about doing this every week. Douglas Williamson. Dr. Tao. Dr. Goatman. I wonder if you guys go to the same school. Just... Huh. Yeah. Dragon <laughs> in the server room. Drowned Summer, Conduit of Ronaldo Dances. Dylan. Everyone in the chamber of secretion. Do not secrete in the chamber. <laughs> I mean, there are certain chambers in which you are. No. <laughs> it is okay for you to secrete. I just Please. wanted to be clear. Okay. Einar Johansson. Ecorin. Elderly Goose. Eleanor Nonante sees Periton. Aline. Emma loves Moose. I also love Moose. Oh, fuck yeah. They're so big. Oh my god, they're mighty. Indigo Vandane. Erwin Lala Gadek. Le Lagadec. Le Lagadec. I don't know. Eventual Eden. <laughs> Extellaris. Five purple conduits. Florian H. Fubar. Conduit of not only Fu, but also Bar. Francois V. Or the fifth. That's what I always say. It could be Francois V. You don't know. Uh, Gorfanax Jr., Conduit of Hunger, and CEO Gorfanax Brain Meats. I do think we should vote him off the board, though. Grimlock. Happy birthday on November 13th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jorgen. Jorgen, Jorgen, Indie Monster, conduit of name B. I know it's butchering. I know it's name butchering. Lauren does not have Excel, so I have to export the list that Patreon sends me into a PDF, and it ruins some of the marks that aren't in standard English, so some of the names don't look right for her. Oh, I have an excuse. What's yours? Oh, I have a bad mouth. Oh, okay. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> Next name, Harley Astor. Harrison Andrew. Hedron Master. Highway to Mel. Fuck, that's very good. Hustle Bones. I am Tosk. I am Tosk. Aw. It's a Star Trek thing. Anyway. Oh, I would not know. It's okay. I read a Zondra light novel and transformed into a patron. Ian Morgan. Any relation? No. I, I know this is Emmanuel Pinachos. I thought it said Emmanuel Pistachios and I almost lost it. <laughs> It also could be Pinocchio's. It's Pinocchio's. I know. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I said that so snooty, like, obviously. <laughs> Ingemar Grimon. Isaac Arevalo. Jack Cluck. Jade the Mind Sculptor. Oh, Jade's back to normal. Hey, Jade. Not banned in modern anymore. Not pretending to be a McElroy anymore. Caught you. James Neely. Janiac, conduit of five gallons of lube and a kilo of glitter in a paddling pool. Oh, no. That sounds like a mess. Is it, is it Janiac, Laura's fiance? What are y'all getting up to over there in England? They just have more fun than us. Everybody has more fun than me. Damn. Jasper, conduit of Movember fluffiness. Jay Logan, conduit of queerness itself. Uh, Jay Poirier. Jeff Clark. Jesse, conduit of existential dread. Also a big mood. Joaquin Groening. John Beresford. John Kerry. Not that one. I add that. What'd you add? <laughs> not that one. I say that every every month. John Kerry, not that one. Oh, because yeah. John Kerry? I bet they're really tired of me saying that every month. Probably. It's like, that's just my name, Austin. Stop it. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. John Potts. John Barnett. Joseph Tombrello. Josh Mosier. J.P. Green. Oh, I thought that was J- JRPG Ian. I was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Juman Jack O' Lantern. Still oh, rocking the Halloween. Spooky. I respect it. Julian Phillips. Junk 2.0. Just a jester. Justin Berthasel, conduit of ooh, ooh itself. Also a big mood. Mm-hmm. Uh, Caster UK. Kate, conduit of instant regret. The biggest mood. Uh, Kaylee Scherer. Keller Automat. Kevin Dobbins. Killer Cotton Shiz now. Kitty Foe. Christina, conduit of every animal on Hypatia themselves. They are absolute units. You have to give it Christina, to them. Christina, come to my house if you're all those animals. 
But if you're not all those animals, then you lied to me and don't come to my house. We don't have any place for liars in this house. <laughs> the cats lie a lot, so I guess I do. Damn. Criterion, conduit of bad puns. Lana Seawolf, Lady of Bones. She's a paleontologist, so it's not... <laughs> I know that sounds Wait, very Wait, is she ominous. really? Really? Huh? Is she really a paleontologist? Yeah, you need to spend more time in our Discord. Um, I spend a lot of time crying in bed. I don't have time oh. for other things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the schedule's packed, I'm sorry. Uh, Lady the Young, conduit of not mad, just disappointed. Lily Cage, conduit of stay tuned. The rudest conduit. <laughs> Lindsay Pankhurst. Logion, conduit of fatigue. Now that's my big mood. I, we can both claim that mood. It's okay. Sharing is caring. Lauren Cates. Luke Powers. MJ. Markov needs pangolins. Agree. Sure fucking does. Yeah. The Cult of Gorfinax. Matthew B. Hare. Conduit of cranberry sauce. That, that's that November shit. Give me that turkey day bullshit. Matthew Schultz. Matthew Weber, but also I am Tosk. Hell yeah. I, I still don't. <laughs> all my Tosk bros out here. I still don't get it. There's a character in Star Trek who the only thing he says is I am Tosk. He was the original Hodor, if you think about it. Oh, no. Yeah. Math- Matthias Lackett. Maz Jin. Melissa Nielsen. Mel Tish. Mary Flowers. That's right. Fuck Thanksgiving. Now, do we want to bring that kind of ne- negativity in here, Mary Flowers? You know what you did, Mary Flowers. Well, I don't know. Maybe if Amy was, sometimes I also feel like fuck Thanksgiving when I'm there and I have to look all the people in the eyes. Oh, and I have to like talk to like all the people and they're like, what are you doing with your life this, this year, Lauren? And I'm like, all I did was cry a lot. And, and, yeah, that's basically, I'm like, oh, I love this turkey. I love this mashed potatoes. But if you say another thing about what you saw on the news, I'm going to stab you with a fork. All right. I get it, Mary Flowers. You're off the hook. Michael Groman, Michael Hall, Michelle Minkler. Miko from Finland, Morgan Rapp, Nicholas Dominic, Nina Pearson, Noah Sudret, Notorious Stoltz, Conduit of Notorious Stoltz itself, fair enough. Paul Mullen, Possum Kingdom Refugee. I still want to go to the Possum Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Pruitt Holcomb, Puck, Conduit of Large Ambitions Before Follow Through. I can't believe you all are calling me out like this this month. Are these all you? No, but they fucking got me. Okay. Quench the Void. Rain conduit of wetness herself. I feel as though the algorithm has put the quench the void and wetness herself next to each other. I feel like they could sort a situation out between them. <laughs> oh no. It's quenchy. Who's turn? Oh, it's my turn. Random web person. Rasvita. Razumi Yazura. Rain or the conduit of slightly less stoned. I fucking got you, Rain on. I'm never less stoned. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep with one eye open, bitch. I'm coming for you. <laughs> uh, Richard G. Coles. Robert Dakin. Oh, this one's really good. God damn it. Rulon, conduit of that time Austin said flute too to close to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can provide a timestamp, I would like to hear myself say flute too close to the sun. <laughs> flute too <toot. laughs> <laughs> That's, that'd be a good back tattoo. Flute toot close to the sun. <laughs> In oh Latin God. over a picture of the sun. S. Kearney, oh. conduit of coffee. That's also Austin. Uh, I'm trying to lay off. Salad child. Sam Zdenowitz. Scott Goings. Oh, you got us, Scott. <laughs> Scott McLeod. Scott, who stole my name for a joke, coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they're dueling. There's a, it's, I love our fans. There's a fencing match going on in the credits. Uh, Scotty Vilhard. Sean Lyonsberg. Sean, the host of Funk Dunk Plays. Sevarden Akrasimova. Shane Sedgwick. Shane Ware, conduit of ethical hedonism itself. AKA season five. Sir underscore octopus. I don't know if you want me to say underscore. It's the only one that has an underscore in it. So I'd... I just imagine a, an octopus with like a monocle and a top hat, and that's pretty good. Yeah, cane, doctorate. I like him. Snowfall frost did nothing wrong. I don't know. Sprankton, a noun, a disease you get from chewing too much. <laughs> <laughs> I love the comment. Please leave the ter- turn all of this into just fun trivia facts. Seriously, Sydney Marzing. Syretha, conduit of puns. The cast of Dungeons the Gathering. Didn't we have two conduit of puns? Did we? There's so many names I forgot already. Where were we? The Had Cells. I read it for you, bitch. Which one am I? The hottest, gayest, purest, goodest gen. I guess I took that from you, too. Mm-hmm. I tricked you. Now you have to read the rest of them. No. 
<laughs> the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Marietta, Georgia. Was that too long for you to say? No, I just would like telling you now. Oh, okay. Okay, it was just a power thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. The paladin's wife. Did I just get bombed my own credits? The fuck? <laughs> oh, no! Tim Lutton. Tired cucumber, all cucumber same. Toby Gleason stack. Tom Turkey's tuber tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down to Tom Turkey's tuber tunnel. We have all the tubers you need for your Thanksgiving needs. <laughs> I'm so glad you, you understood what I was doing there. Toshiro Kuru, editor of Attack on Dice. Transient passerby. Shayness. Vega Arnston. Victoria Melito. Vinny, conduit of gay pop music. Yeah. Now they're just pandering to you. This Okay, so Austin gets dunks and you get like, oh, we love your work so much. You're Vinny and you're so gay and cute. We love you. Also, Austin said a thing one time and said flute toot to the sun. <laughs> flute toot. <laughs> uh, whose turn is it? I don't know. I went off on a thing there. Vizzy Uncles, keep up the great work, y'all. See? Thanks, Vizzy. Ziphasaurus. Yeah. Yoko Taro is Yoko Taro, the conduit of Yoko Taro. Okay, if, Yoko, if you're listening, where's Drake and Guard 4, bitch? <laughs> and finally, Z23619. And that's all of them. Actually, another one came in as we were recording. Uh, Andrew Fedye. I'm sorry. I just It's it's the J, it's just not for Americans. We don't know what to do with it. I see the J in there, and my brain says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a lot. This this month wow thanks guys yeah i'd rather it be a lot than too little that means you do enjoy our work and oh my god i looked at their corn against 21 minutes that cannot know, stand like, that cannot be fuck, I'm we running. have to leave I'm so late for work we have to go i mean you should definitely follow laura at laura k buzz everywhere kotaku.co.uk chris patreon.com slash weekly mug recap conrad conrad is at conrad zimmerman on twitter of horse the podcast Austin. Me, patreon.com slash Austin Yorsky. You know what it is. You know where we are. Dot bandcamp, dot sketch, dot bandcamp, dot sketch, dot bandcamp. Dot com slash sketch, yeah. And um, also, big thanks to everybody in the Discord, all the great artists. Thanks to me. You're welcome. You didn't name me, bitch. You're here and you're queer and you can't be stopped. What else do you want? <laughs> I just want you to acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the show is it's nothing but acknowledging that fair thanks to all the moderators in the discord thanks to everybody who sends me constructive criticism i know the combat could be harder but they start crying i'm sorry if i make it harder they cry i don't know what you want me to do i feel like we don't cry <laughs> you cried before. okay you literally i never cried i don't know what you're talking about i didn't cry at the beginning of this recording you started you started crying in the middle of this recording i had to edit it out did I really? Yes. I cry so much that I forget when I cry. <laughs>